Hey everybody and welcome to uh, this week's Slap and Paint on a Mini with me, it's Adventures with Peps. We have a 2000 AD Warlord Games Slain Droon Lord. This is the one from the starter set and I do believe he is the last one I need to paint. So we grab in the Absolution Green from the Army Speed Painter to kick things off. I am purely going to be using the Army Speed Painters, hence... He is all painted white to help this project flow nicely. So this is the last model I need to paint in that starter set. So that should mean we can do some uh, rule book stuff and some, some campaigns. That's going to happen next year. I'm, I'm not going to crush it into December. It's not going to happen. I want to take a little bit of time with it. So hopefully I can uh, do it properly justice. It'd be a nice thing for January, February when the old YouTubes are a bit quieter, works a bit quieter. I can uh, spend some time messing around with it. I hope you've been enjoying these 2000 AD painting sessions. I know I have. I'm excited for the ABC Warriors, which are coming soon, hopefully in January. And we can do some painting and talking on them as well. But I think I'm starting to get through a large chunk of the backlog. And I really love the space that I'm clearing up, <laughs> which I'm sure as hobbyists you can all appreciate. It's always nice to get through some of the backlog and hopefully treat yourself to something nice soon. But who are the Droon Lords? Yep, I'm going to talk about them. I've uh, been waffling for the first minute and a half, so it's probably time we actually talked about the character. The Droon Lords are characters from the 2000 AD strip Slain. They are a group of cultists who worship the dark gods such as Kromkrow. I have no idea if I'm saying that right. And they're intent on wiping out what was Ireland, Britain and Northern Europe. Obviously the land of the young. Their dark magic has already warped the land, opening portals to hell and granting access to otherworldly menaces such as the demons. The Druins commit a large number of slaughters and sacrifices in the name of the gods and their rule is enforced by the barbaric skull swords, who I have painted some. I actually have a box set of even more of them to paint up, so you'll see some more videos on them soon. Their most famous dream lord was the former Horned King, the Lord Weird Sloth Feg, who I don't own. I need to get that kit from Warlord Games. Lord Weird Slug Feg, <laughs> these names led the main attack against the Celtic tribes. A large number of druids perished during the climax of the Horned King Saga comic, many being slain in battle or being turned on by their own men after Slain revealed that their master's intent was to kill them all once their usefulness was over. Famous druids other than Sloth Feg include Sof Frot and <laughs> Sof Fruk, I think that's how you say that one, female druids or priestesses of the Badab, are called Druunesses. They include Meb, Faya the Hateful, Nemon the Venom Venomous, and Kafu the Fury. Oh my god, I can't say these names. Uh, powers and abilities. They have varying degrees of magical powers, with Feg being the strongest. And they are ultimately humans at the end of the day, so they can die pretty easily, especially when slain swinging his axe. They come usually with an animal mask. They love to ride in the sky chariots, which look like Viking longships but can fly. And they carry sacrificial knives. One of the Droon Lords' distinguishing features is their awful smell, which is why their little cronies all wear the straw face masks, including this Droon in particular. He's got one as well. So yeah, they're a weird character. So they're basically a cult leader the worships gods that want to destroy the men and they're led by a guy that should have died years and years and years ago and he's basically this almost wasted walking corpse that just smells of death so they're pretty crazy uh this talking of crazy it, the zoom or the focal point has completely lost the model at the moment it will come back but until then, you can enjoy my gnarly hands. Let's. There we go, we're back. So we've got a few more dabs of green to do. 
he is predominantly green. I had thought of breaking it up with a couple of different green shades, but I really like this. It's got a foresty swamp colour to it, and it just made sense for this guy. He's not a main uh, Drune Lord in any way, shape, or form. He's going to be a nameless, nameless cultist leader, so I don't need to go crazy on him. But I think this green is absolutely gorgeous. So let me skip forward a little bit, and we can get on with the next stage. Right, I saved you a boring step of me painting the base brown. I didn't think we needed to watch that. I'm pretty sure you all know and understand how to put brown on a base. If you don't, I apologize. Let me know in the comments and I can show you how I do my bases. But really, it is just glue, sand, brown paint. Up next, I grab the sand golem. I'm using this on his straw beard and his furry back. I'm not entirely sure if it's a fur animal or if it's some sort of weird leaf mesh. So luckily sand golem kind of looks like goat hide. So that's what we're going with. We're going to assume this is some form of goat hide. I'll use maybe a brown later on to add some definition to it as well. And what I'm going to do is paint against the grain of the model. Now with textures like this one, I find that if I paint this way, I get better shading just because it's catching against the edge a lot better and it's depositing the paint straight into where it's needed the most. And it just gives it a quick, very nice effect. Now I'm going to be careful here and try and get these face straws. These are weird, weird things on the models. I know uh, from previous videos of these models, people have argued what this is. As far as I'm concerned, it's made of straw. It, they use it to cover their face to help hide the smell and not obviously smell the decaying flesh all around them. Some people think it's hair. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. Ultimately, it doesn't matter, but I like to pretend it's straw of some sort. And then grab the hardened leather. I'm going to use this only in a couple of locations. This is going to be a quick step. Overall, this model was actually quick. The green took the longest part. So we are going to start shifting forward quite quickly now. I'm just going to pick out a sacrificial dagger. Nothing fancy here. I'm also picking out the stitching that he has on his robes. Just to give it little bit of character but ultimately this is a nice quick step if I go back later to do more detail I would probably do a nice lighter color for the stitching and then as you see I am gonna just splodge areas randomly with the brown that's left on my brush that's gonna mix in with that wet sand golem and just darken down the fur so it looks a little bit different from his straw beard but not too much. And then, you know what? I liked it so much. I'm going to do straw bird as well. Who cares? This is me now. I just dab paint wherever I please. And I'm hoping you learn something from it. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video so far, let me know in the comments below. And even better, drop me a like, subscribe and all that good stuff. And then we move on to the pallid bone I am using this to represent his flesh tones. These guys are on the verge of death. They are wasting away, hoping that the powers of their gods will sustain their bodies. So they're not meant to be healthy. So I'm going with this bone color. It lightens up quite nicely. He's going to look pretty sickly. And I think that's the effect you want with these guys. They're not healthy not strong they're just cultist leaders that are wasting away slowly it's something about this model though it was very tempting to paint him yellow and go for like a cthulhu king in yellow cultist leader i might have to get another one of these models to try it out 
it's one of those itches in the back of my head that ever since painting this, I've been wanting to do that. And then for the final step, we're going to do Agrax Earthshade. I basically am just going to plaster this over the model, taking it straight out of the pot and putting it straight onto the model. This is going to help darken down the robes, make everything look a little bit dirty. Add some depth to the model, darken it all down. This is grim, dirty fantasy. We're not Conan the Barbarian around here. We are slain. We are fighting in the muddy swamps of Ireland. And I think that's pretty much it. There's a little bit of work on the base that I need to do just to finish it up, sticking grass, painting it black, that kind of stuff. Nothing I feel you guys need to watch. And there we go, I spill it. Luckily, I caught it in time, so I didn't waste too much paint. And I'm just going to use that now. I can slap that on. As you can see, it looks... This is that stage where it's like, what am I doing? It will dry up nicely. So I'll take some photos, and you can enjoy them with a little bit of music. And uh, that's the end of the video for this week. As always, I do appreciate you stopping by. Drop me a comment, say a hi. I want to talk to people. It's lonely here in Ottawa during the winter. So uh, say hello, and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers for watching.